Til høyre for meg, Simen King Gudbrandsen, Norges beste pokerspiller uten en NM-titel. Nå er tidspunktet hvor han skal ta sin aller, aller første. Og det mot Øyvind Larsen, som ikke bare har en, ikke to, men tre NM-titler. Og hele to av dem kommer nettopp i Hedsøp. Dette er rett og slett duellen vi kan drømme om. Dette er duellen du burde glede deg til. Og dette er duellen som du kommer til å ryke. Let's get ready to rumble! Kjør! Hello YouTube! This is Jason Glatzer back once again for the Heads Up Finals this time of the Norwegian Championship. There were 74 entries to enter this 800 euro buy-in Heads Up affair. We are down to just the final two players on the left. We have Oyvind Larsen wearing the black hoodie and wearing the colorful jacket. On the right is Seaman Van Branson. Now Seaman yesterday dispatched in the semifinals the formidable WSOP main event champion of last year, Espen Ullen Jorstad. Now he just has one match to go to potentially become the latest heads up champion of the Norwegian championship. Both players have locked up 10,910 euro with a little bit more to come. Tonight's winner will go home with 16,628 euro. The format remains the same as it has throughout the match. Players will start off with 10,000 in chips with the ability to get 10,000 more with one bullet at their disposal at any time. They can wait till they lose their chips. They can even start with 20,000 if they so choose. Both Oyvind and Seaman have opted to start with a 10,000 stack with blinds at 5,100. Blinds will increase every 15 minutes until a winner is crowned. We should be in for exciting poker as these two have made it through to the championship. And even if they got lucky at some point, they had to have some skill to get to where they are. Once again, this is Jason Glatzer and looking forward for the rumble. Players are ready in their seats, ready to go. Just waiting for those cards to fly in the air. You can see the trophy sitting there in the middle of the table. That likely means as much to these guys as the extra money. The pride that goes along with winning a Norwegian championship is rather large within the Norwegian community. Everybody wants to be a Norwegian champion. And here we go. Being that it's heads up, there is no big blind, Dante. It will be just 5,100 to start. So players will be rather deep in the beginning. Although we've seen how aggressive Seaman can play, we do not know Oyvind's style quite yet, but we shall learn soon enough. Oyvind opening with the min race and Seaman uh, just showing up at the 90s will be folding the first time you heard like a uh, a funny round of applause by somebody there for Oyvind Larsen to win that first pot but there is quite the rail that has gathered around to see who will be the latest heads up champion both players seem to be rather popular within the Norwegian community Oh my, look at this. On the very second hand, both players with premium cards. Seaman raising it up to 250 with his 10. So let's see what Oyvind Larsen decides to do. Will he be three betting? Will he just be calling? We know he won't be folding. Does three bet to 850? Could we be seeing mayhem right away? Seaman. does just call. May have saved the mayhem, but it's already 1700 in the pot. A great flop for 10s, three cards under the 10. Meanwhile, Oyvind can't be too happy about this flop with his ace queen. And does check after three betting the pot, three flop out of position. And let's see what, let's see what Seaman decides to do with his 10s from the button. 
does bet 600 into a pot of 1700. And Barson giving up on the hand. So the first significant pot goes to Seaman Gobranson, who yesterday, as we just mentioned, defeated 2022 WSMP main event champion Espen Unen Orsted. Boy, been sporting the Cool Bet hoodie. There's hundreds upon hundreds of Cool Bet players in the house. And Larson opening up with a dominated 7 5 to Cole Branson's King 5 for a min race of 200. Let's see if Cole Branson just calls or three bets. He does just call. Players are super deep at the moment with the ability to even be deeper if they so choose. Neither player connecting with this all black 10, Queen 10 flop. Nobody with any flush draws or real draws here. Can Larson steal away this small pot simply by betting 200? Indeed he does. So both players already showing signs of feistiness. Signs of table awareness very early in this match. I think we are in for a treat. And earlier today, we got to witness for a good part of the day, chess legend Magnus Carlsen playing on day 1B of the main event. That will advance to day two tomorrow. That is a freeze out affair. Players can still get into the action before cards are in the air at noon tomorrow. But players that already hit the rail are not invited to come back. They are invited to play the many other events taking place this week during the Norwegian Championship. So Larson opens up the button with King 10 for a min raise called Branson calls. Not the flop Larson wanted to see, but will be repping that it is. That's more than half the pot, 250 into a pot of 400. Well, Branson with the gut shot, one over card to the board. Let's see how he approaches this. will indeed make the call, which should be a sign of concern for Larson. Ankle Branson connects with this four, but it is a scary board with a six connecting for a straight. Neither player with the six in their hand. Maybe Larson will try to rip that six, but slows down, checks the turn. And let's see how this plays out after the two of diamond completes the board on the river. Well, Branson checks, Larson checks behind. And Larson's king high doesn't get the job done after Gilbranson's four connects on the turn. Branson raising with the 6 3. Larson defending with the ace deuce. And called Branson flopping the open ender on a rainbow 4 5 10 flop. Larson still ahead, however, with his ace. Larson checks. Let's see if Cole Branson will be betting his open ender. Indeed, he will. It's a small bet of 150. Don't expect Larson to go too far. He does have a gut shot to the wheel.
five of spades. Perry, the board on the turn. Larson checking once again, still ahead. Welcome Branson. Take a stab at this pot. There are a few cards that would give him a straight, a deuce, or a seven. And it's a seven of diamonds completing the board on the river. Gold Branson gets there with the straight. Arson likely to check again. Let's see what Seaman does here. Seaman will be betting here. Let's see how big he makes it and whether Larson feels he has a bluff catcher or not. Does bet 600 into a board of 800. And Larson double checks his cards before folding. Seaman not able to get more value out of his hand. He was able to get a call on a small bluff bet when he was behind and then when he completed his straight, no more value but still adds 400 chips to his stack. And it looks like despite a trophy on the line along with another 6,000 euros to the 10,000 they already won to the winner, players are laughing, they're having fun. This time it was Oyvind min racing with A7 and getting a shout after Seaman folds. So a rowdy rail there for, uh, for Larson. I, we know that Cole Branson also has a decent rail as well. It's Seaman's rail is not as loud, but they look like fun. Seaman having a good laugh with them. And Oyvind picking up the sixes from the button, raising for a min raise. Cole Branson will likely defend his 7 5 off. He will not be defending, he will be raising the 700. Perhaps a little bad timing here. His seven is still alive. I do not expect a three, a four bet by Larson, and he just completes the action with a call. But 1,400 in the pot on the nine ace four heart flop on Branson with no hearts. Larson does have the six of hearts. Cole Branson leading out for 400 from out of position. There are a lot of aces in Siemens range after he three bet. But Larson going nowhere at the moment with his flush draw as well. It is just a six for the flush, but still a flush draw nonetheless. Let's see if Seaman keeps his foot on the pedal with the aggression, trying to rip something greater than that 7-5. He does have a few outs to a wheel. His 7 is still alive as well, but I don't believe he would think it would be if he gets a call here. And bets 1100 and Larson quickly calls. And the 10 of hearts on the river gives Larson a flush. It's not a strong flush with the six of hearts. Is a third pullet coming out from Seaman. This would look so strong, but so far Larson has gone nowhere despite a scary board for the sixes. And Seaman giving up on the hand. Is Larson gonna try for some thin value with this six of hearts giving him that flush. Does not, checks it back, but does pick up the pot. He was ahead the entire mm -hmm. way. And now Larson 
takes the lead away from Cole Branson. Huh? This does look like a very high action game like yesterday's matchup in the semifinals between Seaman and Espen. Seaman is very entertaining and did hold his own against the world champion. It wasn't that he got lucky. He played super well. A little luck never did hurt, but with the cards holding, etc., etc., but remained calm, cool, and collected despite facing off against one of the most famous poker players in the world at this point. So now it's Larson's turn to get a little feisty. Cole Branson opens up his King Jack suited. Larson with the King 3 suited, 3 betting. Seaman calls with the better hand with the dominating King Jack but he may feel his King Jack is dominated. And both players not gonna go anywhere. And this is a bit of a cooler as of so far for Cole Branson, flopping top pair, but Larson flopping two pair. And Oyvind continuing for 700 into a pot of 1700. As the three bet aggressor from out of position. Seaman shouldn't be going anywhere. We see he's behind, but he's so often dominating with this top pair. Larson's two pair is still good here. Let's see what Oyvind opts to do here. He should feel confident he's ahead. He should try to get some more chips in if he can, whether by betting or inducing a bet from his opponent. But in this case, he's taking the bull by the reins and Bets 1800 into 3100. Seaman was asking if it was 1.8. Oyvin confirmed soon after Seaman finds the call. And despite him being behind, who can blame him? And the four clubs on the river, well, Branson not able to get there after being ahead pre flop but falling behind to his opponent's two pair on the king three six flop let's see if larson will bet again he is behind a few hands but he should feel pretty confident that he has that check mark that we see in front of him is thinking things through the pot is very big both players with about a pot size bet behind and larson goes all in putting Cole Branson to the test. It's very hard to fold. I mean, if it was deeper, there would never be a fold. The only thing that possibly could save Cole Branson here is the fact that they're still at the opening blind level, still only 10 hands in. And oh my, Seaman making the correct fold there with the top pair. Very difficult to do in real time. Much easier for us to do when we see that Oyvind had that two pair. Amazing read there by Seaman. This is why he's in the finals and we are in the commentating booth. We see the floor man Petit over there, ready to commentate any all in and call. Like the consummate professional he is. We have worked together in many stops when I've been a poker reporter. And once again, Seaman with the dominating king. It didn't work out for him so much last time. He was able to get away from it. And it's Larson opening with the min raise. Now with Seaman going to three better call. I believe he will be three betting best based on his aggressive nature. And this is a pretty hand even out of position, raising it up to 700. And Larson with a pretty hand in position and heads up play anyway, maybe not in full ring. Will likely be at least seeing a flop. I don't think we'll be seeing a four bet. And there's already 1400 in the pot. And this time Larson gets there again. Again, although this time it's with bottom pair, but he does have that gut shot flush draw on top. Meanwhile, Branson has 
the gut shot to Broadway has the uh, has the gut shot to Broadway. Let's see if Arson will do anything with this bottom pair. And along with his back doors to the push. Back doors are done. Two of hearts on the turn. Arson still ahead with third pair now. A 2600 in the pot. The pots are getting more bloated than some of the other heads up matches that we've seen early on. Both players ready to rumble. And now Cole Branson gets there with the queen on the river. He was ahead pre flop and now he's ahead again on the river. Both players check and Seaman will win the hand with a pair of queens to Larson's pair of nines. Now we can see the chip counts of both players, but keep in mind both players can also add. 10,000 to their stack at any time. And after back-to-back -back hands with players having some Broadway cards in their hands, both players were crap. Arson probably more than happy to get a walk with his 8-5. And it's 15 minute blind level, so blinds will go up fast in this. However, because it's heads up, they will get a lot of play each blind level. And this time it's called Branson's turn to get a walk. So after some aggressive play, the previous few hands, the last two hands ended in a walk for both players. Back to some pre-flop action now with Seaman racing to 250. Oyvind calls. We can't see the cards quite yet. Perhaps until then we will see what's on the board. But not quite yet. Now we do. And now we see the cards too. Two ace, two on the flop. Arson check called a bet. Arson check folded to a bet of 250 and Seaman is able to win a small pot. And it was a bet of 150, not to 250. 250 was a pre-flop raise. The graphics were showing the pre-flop action after coming up slightly late. Hence my confusion as well. And blinds have already gone up to 75, 150. Still players are mega deep. I would expect this match to go to at least 300, 600 blind level. It could go to 500, 1,000 and beyond as well. But based on the aggression of both players, perhaps things will end differently. But Seaman calls from the big line a min raise by Larson. Seaman only with the 6 3. Both players popping a gut shot, but Larson still ahead with his king high. But Larson now really ahead. I mean, Seaman. Paired the board with the six, but Larson now has the straight and the five of clubs pairing the board on the turn. And Seaman betting just 200, perhaps trying to get some value from those Broadway cards that may just call and will likely get out of the way facing a raise to 1,000. Unless he thinks his opponent is trying to pull off an early bluff. His opponent would have showdown value with his aces potentially. 
It is a dangerous board. Let's see if Simei can snip this one out. Seaman making the call. He will get the bad news that his read was wrong. Arson whipped the straight to win the hand. Up to 14,000 with the ability to add 10 more. And meanwhile, Seaman is down to 6,000. He could change that now if he wanted to 16, but based on how we saw him play yesterday, he's more than likely to keep that in reserve in case he loses his Olympic stack. A monster heads up hand here for Seaman with the Jacks. Opening it up to 350, a little more than a min bet. Arson with a pretty enough hand to defend with the 10 7 suited. This could spell Dajan for Oyvind here. He flopped top pair. He did check it over. Perhaps the three spades will slow something down at some point, but expect for at least the time being for Seaman to bet his over pair. He does bet 250 into a pot of 700. I even got that confirmed before he made the call. King of the clubs on the turn may actually slow things down as well. Oyvind checks once again very quickly. Seaman now does not have an over pair to the board. If Oyvind had a king in his hand, we see that he doesn't. He would actually be behind, but it is not slowing down Seaman at all. Bets 800 into a pot of 1200. It's very difficult to read Seaman as he'd be doing this with a lot of hands. And Oyvind felt compelled to make the call and there's already 2800 in the pot. And the jack of hearts on the river to give Will Branson a set. He's only losing to a few hands like ace queen to Broadway and a flush of course. But Larson checking it over it does have potential showdown value. Let's see if Seaman We'll try to get more into the pot. I believe he should, and I believe he will. And then it's going to be questionable what Larson will do here. Does bet a thousand. It would be a good read if Larson can get away from this, but he does get away, folks. Apparently, I'm getting a heads up less than two. It did turn out to be a slightly scary board, but I felt that Oyvind had showdown value, but did make the correct results for the fold. Probably the correct fold in terms of strategic value as well. He didn't make it to the finals without not knowing how to play heads up. I typically only play heads up when I made it to heads up in a big MTT, which is much different. Here you can take a look at the payouts. Tonight's winner will go home with 16,628 euros. Both players have already locked up their 10,910. And Larson min racing with the jack three. Seaman with the dominating ace jack. Let's see if he three bets or calls. He does three bet it to 900. event does fold. It seems like Oyvin has good awareness of where he stands based on the first few hands of play.
I just keep staring at that beautiful trophy. Special thanks to Shared Hands once again, not only for the stream, but for uh, providing me some refreshment as well. And back to the action, 700 in the pot. Oyvind flopping two pair. Unfortunate for him that Gold Branson doesn't have really anything going on here, but does get Seaman to bet into this pot after checking it over to him. Quickly calls. And you can see how massive a favorite it is. And now the check mark goes over to Oyvind with his opponent drawing dead and checks once again. Seaman checking it back and the nine of spades on the river. After being checked back, expect Oyvind to try to get a little bit of value here or maybe a lot. He should likely be thinking that his opponent is not checking back many hands that are beating him. But no value to be had, no showdown value at all for Seaman. But Larson has all the momentum. And speaking of the trophy, here's another look. Those slippers look rather comfortable as well. The attention to detail by the organizers of the Norwegian Championship is second to none. Been having a fabulous time all week long at Card Casino. Norwegian players are not only fun on the tables, but off the tables as well. Looking forward to a backgammon session later this evening myself, which will also be heads up, but not for a trophy or a title, just for some pride. No time for poker for me this evening, as we will be back also tomorrow for day two of the main event starting at noon. Seaman opening up the 10-5 off, and Oyvind calling with his ace four. A 10 out of the window. So it's not what you have, it's what you flop. Oyvind checks. I would expect based on Seaman's aggression to be betting more than checking, but he proves me wrong with a check back. See, despite Oyvind not connecting, whether he'll bet checks once again. And we'll see him try to add more chips to this pot. Indeed, he will. Oyvind seems to be always aware of where he's at with the hands. Does fold. absolutely enjoying this match already and we're only in the early goings the other matches that we've covered have all gone to 400 800 or even 500 1000 i believe one even reached 600 1200 and even though we've been commentating the main event all day long I want this to go as long as possible. I absolutely love watching and talking about heads up poker. I have a lot to learn myself. I've done quite well with heads up when I've been heads up in tournaments in a, in a uh, multi-table full ring event. This is a much different breed. And you can see our amazing photographer Thomas Stotch in the background now, the angle is the floor petite possibly looking at tournament information 
on his mobile device. And Oivan now uh, with the nines, a monster in heads up play. And we'll have a good opportunity here with Will Branson opening up with this Jack Six suited, but doesn't three bet just opts to call. Already 700 in the pot during the 22nd hand of heads up action and the heads up finals. And both players can't be loving or hitting this all spade flop. It was five, seven, eight. Will Branson with an open ender. Larson with an overpair. Good job, guy. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Both players check. A ton of diamonds follows on the turn. Larson looking to protect his head. Does have the open ender as well. Could be concerned about those three spades. Could be concerned about the ten, but the open ended straight draw adds the value of his nines despite it being an overcard to his nines. Well, Branson confirming it was for 400. And the eight of diamonds pairing the board on the river. Will Larson try for some thin value here? Not this time he checks, maybe trying to induce his opponent with some bluffs he could have. There's a lot of bluffs he could have had on the turn that didn't get there on the river. Lots of draws anyway. But Seaman giving up on the hand. And Barson wins the pot. So momentum is all with Ivan Larson at this point against Seaman Bill Branson, but that can change quickly. We've seen it happen before in an earlier match with Jonathan Wedd against Espen Rulin and Orstad. Wedd had all the momentum, ran a sick bluff with a three against the world champion. Then Espen came back won three flips in a row to eventually win the match. Despite not winning it, Jonathan could at least say, I made a sick bluff on stream against a world champion. Something he can always live with. And I'm sure he would also like to have advanced from that match as well. Steve asking for the floor. Ah, uh, Seaman wants a napkin. He wanted a napkin yesterday. Maybe that's lucky for him. If napkins are his thing, perhaps uh, bringing them to the table next time is a good idea. But uh, when you are in the finals, you have other things on your mind about whether you have enough napkins with you or not. And Gold Branson once again opening up. This time the 350. And Varson waking up with a big slick. Although we didn't see him three bet his nines, we may see him three bet here. And indeed he does to 11.50. And now we'll see him in continue along or will he fold? He does take down the pot. Was asked to help by the dealer to make some change. Seaman tossed in a 500 chip when announcing his bet to 350. Larson's getting hit in the face with the deck. Nines, ace king, now sevens. Been racing with the sevens. Well, Branson snap defending with his queen six has one over for card to those sevens. Now has a gut shot to Broadway, not much else, but this is a scary board for Larson with the sevens despite being pretty far ahead. Well, Branson's queen is still alive as well. The two of hearts is basically a blank for both players, although Larson should be happy that it's a card under a seven. Both players check again, and the jack of spades pairing the board on the river. It looks like it will go check, check once again, and Larson, with the pair of sevens, wins yet another pot. It's pot after pot after pot, good hand after good hand after good hand. And even when he was behind with that king three, did flop two pair against king jack.
demon who was very uh, looked very happy yesterday. Looks a little deflated at the moment, but you, who can blame him? Things have not started off the best for the man who beat the world champion during yesterday's semifinals. Cole Branson opening yet another button, this time with 10 7. Arson opting to defend with his ace 8 and not put more in. And a 10 out of the window, but an ace to follow, so both players grabbing a piece. But Larson with the top pair does check it over. And Cole Branson betting 250 with his middle pair, which is very often good. Larson does make the call after checking it over to him. The Queen of Hearts in the turn. Maybe we'll slow down Gold Branson as he might be turning his hand into a bluff. And he has tons of showdown value, just not in this case. And now expect after the check check for Larson to bet. He did improve the two pair on that river. Does check though, and Gold perhaps could have gotten a little bit more value there. Gold Branson checks behind, and Larson now is in amazing shape with 15,000 to his opponents. 5,500, perhaps we see Seaman use this extra token. He did use it at some point early yesterday against Espen. I wouldn't mind actually seeing that because it would put him at 15,000 again. And that even though his opponent has that behind him, if he's able to stack him, he would have a three to one edge, etc., etc., etc. This time it's Cole Branson with a dominating hand and gets a walk. Things are just not going well for Seaman, but at least he's now smiling. He looked a little stressed and, and tense before. But regardless of how things turned out for Seaman, he can say that he beat the world champion in the semifinals. He could say that he held his own throughout the match. Seems to be opening just about every button. Very quickly, this time he had a cam though, and Larson did not. And you can see how fast they're playing hands. We're gonna be already up to the 29th hand of heads up play. It's playing at a much faster pace than yesterday's semifinals. A lot more hands per blind level. That may change as the blinds continue to grow up, to go up. by Larson. Well, Branson either going to call or three bet. He calls this time around a suited king. It was a king three by Larson that got Will Branson in a little bit of trouble when they he popped top pair with King Jack. This time it's Larson with two pair again. Not much Will Branson can do. It seems like every hand is going Larson's way. He has to hope for a momentum changer somewhere along the way. Hasn't happened yet. But despite it being early going, it's been quite exciting in this heads up final. And although we haven't seen or even Larson earlier. We can see how he reached the finals. I mean, he is getting cards, but he is playing quite well. Seems to have complete awareness about where he stands, which is often difficult in heads up matchups. To 500. 500. It was. And Larson 
three betting. This is the first time we've seen this with uh, a weakish holding. It gets it through with a nine six suited. So whether it's cards or just playing, it's been all Larson early on. And after such an impressive display yesterday by Seaman Goldbranson, today he's been fumbling out of the gate. As we said, it's not entirely his fault. The cards have not been going his way at all. And blinds are at 100, 200. They were the last hand as well. And Larson min raising this time with 6 3 off. This could have been a hand that he just open folded earlier, but now that he has all the momentum, unafraid to be opening up pretty much every button. And look at this. It's as if he knew he would be flopping trips. And Goldbranson checks his gut shot. Goldbranson still has some hope to a nine or some sort of runners to a better hand. Will be calling a bet of 300 in hopes of something to come on the turn. The King of Hearts is not one of those cards. Does check. Will Larson try for value once again? It looks like he will in case his opponent has an 8 or a King or a 7, 9, 5, 7. He can get value for all these hands. Can he get a value from a 7, 10? Does bet 800 into a pot of 1400. Seaman looks deep in thought. Oh no, Seaman, this is bad timing. Bad timing it all together. And Oyvind Larson has to keep his. Uh, Emotion inside at this point. He has to think his trips are good. Seaman raising it up to 2300. His opponent only has 1925 behind. Does just call, giving Colbranson a chance to get his rest of the stack in on the river. And the Jack of Diamonds does not get it done for Goldbranson, but he's first to act. Is he going to try to steal this away? It's not going to work. No flushes on the board, no straights completed. Obviously, there's better hands, better sixes, some potential full houses. But those are quite unlikely and would be a cooler for Larson, and he understands that. And it's an all-in for Goldbranson, and Larson makes the snap call does see that he did get trapped by a premium hand. Not a premium pre-flop, but flop trips. And Branson is going to need to, early on, use his final token in this heads-up affair. And we'll be at a two-to-one chip deficit. However, Oyvind has 10,000 that he can add to his stack at any time. There's just no point in doing it at the moment. This match may not take as long as the others. Seaman can get absolutely nothing going. Even when he's trying to make moves, he's running into monsters. And there really hasn't been a chance for him to make moves. As Oyvind just keeps getting stacked with by the deck. You're off. <laughs> Seaman's rail trying to cheer him up, trying to get him going. Keep him focused. Our first one pot in a while. Seaman completing from the button. Or even checking back his option. We don't see what the cards are quite yet. Looks like at least two Broadway cards on the board, but it's hard to read from this angle. Here we go. So called Branson finally with something here. 
now has two pair, has his opponent drawing dead. Well, Branson betting and Larson letting go his ace high. He seems to know when to call and know when to fold. Lots of respect here. with a bad eight. Seaman gets a walk. Seaman waking up with the ace queen on the button. Expect to see a raise here. He's aggressive with other hands as well. But when he has it, he's raising the premium heads up hand, premium even full ring hand. And this time it's Varsen with a maybe mistimed three bet, especially if Seaman comes over the top. how Seaman approaches the spot facing a 3-bet by Oyvind. Does call. A jam would have gone through, but then he wouldn't be able to get more money in the pot. Nothing doing on the 7-6-3 flop. Nobody with spades in their hand. Arson's jack and five are alive, and he also now has a gut shot straight draw. Both players checking a two of spades on the turn. Once again, nobody with spades in their hand. But it does make it a bit scarier. And Larson trying to steal this one away from Gold Branson. Get Seaman to fold the best hand. And you can hear the crowd erupt with applause. And here's a look at the rail. Quite impressive. I've been getting a lot of love from the Norwegians on the rail. Seaman also has his fan club around. Although it's my first full year at the Norwegian Championship, I hope I am invited back year after year after year. The vibe here is second to none. Larson again with a premium hand, a dominating ace king to his opponent's king four. Does open for a min raise. Well, Branson makes it easy to defend, not knowing how far behind he is. Oh no. Oh no for a goal. Branson here. Both players flopping top pair, but Seaman with kicker problems. And Oyvind bets 400 after Seaman checks the action over to him. And don't expect Seaman to go anywhere. This is quite the setup. It could be over very soon here. Especially with Seaman playing this fast. He will need a lot of help. You could see he only has 10% equity. Most of that is the drawing to a four, but there are other possibilities. Arson double checking his cards. 
possibly not because he forgot them. He just wants to do that. So Seaman says, and a jam by Larson here. Or even Larson jamming. I don't think Seaman can get away from this hand. Seaman makes the call and is at risk. He is a nine to one underdog. Hit it. He needs Stay three outs. Wow, this could be over fast. Wow. Ivan Larson, it's been a dominating display during the finals of the Norwegian Championship Heads Up Affair. King of Spades, wow. So there's other outs that opened up for a chop pot. Both players have trips. And the Seven of Clubs River. It's all over, Johnny. Oivan Larsen becoming a Norwegian champion, winning the Heads Up Affair against Seaman Nicole Branson for 16,628 euro. Here comes Frode Fargoli, the organizer of the Norwegian championship. And congratulations to Oivan Larsen. Also congratulations to Seaman Nicole Branson Although he was unable to win the championship, he did beat Espen. Jeg Det kan jeg ta med meg, og så får vi bare prøve igjen da, neste år. Og hvordan har det gått til main? Nei, der er jeg ute. Jeg røk jeg i går. Så, nei, vet ikke, jeg kommer til å spille turbon, tror jeg, når jeg ender her. <laughs> og så har jeg egentlig ikke så mye planer. For det har gått litt slag i slag til nå, så kanskje, kanskje jeg rekker å gå på butikken og se litt av byen. Basert på det jeg har lest på både på sendingskanal og andre steder, så tror jeg det er veldig mange som heier på en turbon siden min. Lykke til. Tusen takk. So you just heard from Simon, and now the winner. Patrick. Yeah, no, it's sick. I don't know if it's free for all or du, but I can say that there's no doubt about it. Today, I got the best card, and he had the next best card. But yeah, I took it. Certainly. You know, we just take a look at it and see on all the people who have followed here on the side. It creates a fantastic game against a head-up duel. And with the start we had, this was really a duel that it resonated over, because Simon is a driving good player. Absolutely. I saw it to a condensed long and hard match. But... Han prøvde seg på et par bløffer, og så hadde jeg jo veldig gode kort når han prøvde det, så det var jo uheldig der, åpenbart. Ja, nei, men det er ikke noe å leie meg, for det er ikke mer lang å ha et duell. Det er veldig mye snakk om at Heads Up er et dynamisk spill, det er i stadig utvikling, det er vanskelig for disse gamle gutta i utenforkleinelse for øvrig, men du vant første og tredje mesterskap i Heads Up. Er du et bevis på at god poker er god poker uavhengig av hvor oppdatert man er på moderne strategi? Eller har du bare forandret spillet ditt veldig? Nei, sikkert det første. Jeg har ikke forandret mitt spill veldig mye, vil jeg vel si. Men god poker kommer meg langt med. Selvfølgelig. Men jeg vil fortsatt si at i en heads up format som dette, man må ha en del kort på sin side for å klare det. Men også god poker, selvfølgelig. Hvordan vil du måle deg hvis du er nødt til å sette denne prestasjonen opp mot de to forrige gangene du vant? 
Akkurat nu føles det her veldig bra, og det, det føles best nu. Men jeg husker det var jo enormt å vinne den første, i hvert fall. Og, ja. Alle tre er det vanskelig å, å sette det så lenge siden, også de to av forrige. Så akkurat nu føles det siste best. Hjertelig gratulerer med dagen. Gratulerer som hattrickmester i Hedsøp. Tusen takk. Tusen takk. So that was a hat trick, apparently, for Oivind. And a massive congrats for winning the title and the 16,628 top prize. And once again, nothing to be sad about for Simon Colbranson. Although he got nothing going during this final match, he was able to beat a world champion yesterday in Espen Jolen Jørsted and does collect a handsome prize of 10,910 euros for his runner performance. Well done. Once again, this is Jason Glatzer. I'll be back tomorrow for day two of the main event. Thank you for tuning in and see you tomorrow.